Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Cassidy. Thanks so much for watching. I wanted to do a little mid-April book haul and also just a little book catch-up of what books I've been reading and really enjoying. So let's get into it. I got some books for Easter and I also did go to Barnes & Noble and got a few books and I wanted to share what books I got with you. And as everyone knows, I am a romance girly till I die. So all of these books, besides one uh, very special book, um, are all romance. I'm so excited. Let's start. Okay, the first book I'm gonna start with is a book that I got for Easter from my boyfriend's mom. She literally, I think, bought this as a joke just because she was like, oh, Cass will love this and she's so right, I'm going to eat this up. It's called Every Duke Has His Day by Suzanne Enoch. I've never heard of this author, but I cannot wait to read this book because also, first of all, I'll read any romance, but also I love a like historical romance and something about this like time period of like the Dukes and whatever. I mean, I read the Bridgerton books. I've watched the Bridgerton show. And first of all, I'm so excited for the new season of Bridgerton. And this book is just giving Bridgerton and like really filling my... Bridgerton needs until the new season comes out. There seems to be a lot going on in this book, but it basically follows a duke and the third daughter of a viscount. And there's an accidental dog swap in this park between the duke's aunt's dog that he's watching and the viscount's daughter, Bitsy, her dog. And also she's the diamond of the season, which I eat that right up. And okay, apparently with in the dog swap, someone kidnaps the wrong dog like i don't know there seems to be a lot going on but there's a kidnapping of one of the dogs and so the duke and bitsy are like working together to get the dog back i don't know i can't wait to read it so excited for this book okay next up i got into the dark magnolia parks the fifth book in the series and i okay <laughs> i read all of the other four books of the Magnolia Parks universe and I wasn't like in love with them. I felt like, I mean, there was a lot of hype around these books. Like everyone on Book Talk was eating them up and I get it. Like they're very much, if you don't know what it's about, it's like very Gossip Girl, but like set in London. And so I get the hype around it, but I was like finding so, so many typos and like grammatical errors that I was taking me out of the reading and I was like, Where's the editor? Hello, what happened? But I just like wasn't in love with, I enjoyed it. But like there were also some things in the book where I was just like, what is going on? What is happening? Also like the first two books are told in whoever's perspectives and then the next two books, it's like the same story just told in a different perspective. And I'm like, we already read this. I got the fifth book because, okay, hear me out. I kind of just wanted to finish the series just to say that I finished it. You know what I mean? Like I want, I, I wanted like, kind of know what happens. I don't actually know what this book is about, but I don't want to give anything away by like looking up, you know, like a summary of this book. And if you haven't read the series and like it's kind of spoiled for you. So if you want to read the series, it's Think Gossip Girl, very like social, like elite, younger kit, like younger 20s, I guess. Lots of like parties, dancing, like, lots of drama between this friend group. Read it, read it and find out. I just, I don't know, like I'm gonna read it and like I'm excited to, to read this. I just like, I don't think I loved the series as much as like everyone else seemed to love it, but I will read this book and I will report back. Okay, next up, I'm so, so, so excited. It's Done and Dusted and Swift and Saddled. And I have been talking about these books for so long since Done and Dusted came out. I've been talking about it with my roommate and we just like loved the covers. Like we were like, we have to read these. And if there's one thing about me, I love a cowboy romance, like love, love, love. I started reading them this summer and everyone thought I was crazy. And they were like, what is wrong with you for reading a cowboy romance? Like what kind of books are you reading? And I stand by it. I love a cowboy romance and also my boyfriend's mom also got me these books and she literally said that when she bought them in the bookstore she had to tell the lady that like checked her out like these aren't for me 
because she was so embarrassed to buy them. And I do find that funny because, <laughs> because like me, I'm like, I'm buying these. I'm like, girl, did you read these? Like, I just love a cowboy romance and I cannot wait for this. And the third book is coming out soon, so I have to get on. Well, maybe not like soon, soon, but I really have to get on reading these. If you're curious what these are about, the first book is a small town brother's best friend already. Brother's best friend, obsessed. Clementine or Emmy Ryder has moved away from her hometown. She went to college. She's made a career for herself riding horses, but then she gets in an accident and she can't ride horses anymore and she has to come home. Luke is her brother's best friend who's also like the bad boy. And I guess he owns a bar. And so Emmy comes back home and they run into each other and like start seeing each other more. And Luke is like, I know I shouldn't. It's my best friend's little sister, but he just like can't stay away from her. And I cannot wait to read this. I'm literally so excited. I, it might be my next read. I just like, I've been looking forward to this book for so long that I think it's time. You know the sound clip that's like, it's time, Mariah Carey. That's how I feel right now. I think the second book follows Emmy's brother and his name is Weston and Ada. And Ada like comes into town because she's doing some sort of project for a ranch in this town. And when she gets into town, she goes to the dive bar and sees Weston and I guess things heat up. I, I feel like I can't really talk about this book too much because I don't really know like the characters or this world yet. I feel like I'm going to absolutely eat up this series, but I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Okay, this next book is Bridesmaid for Hire by Megan Quinn, which if I'm being totally honest, I already read. I was so excited. As soon as I bought the book, I started reading it because I love, love, love Megan Quinn. This book was so good. I mean, when you're reading Megan Quinn's books, it's kind of like you have to like suspend your disbelief. Like some of the things that were happening, it was like, would, would all of this stuff really be happening? Probably not, but I don't care. Like, it's so good. I love her writing. It's so funny. All of her books are just, like, hilarious. I read um, the Vancouver Agitator series of hers, and it was so good. Like, I loved her writing style with the group of, like, the guy friends. Like, how they interacted and talked to each other was so funny. And this book is so good. And something I also love about her books is that there's always like a character or two that's like brought up or like briefly mentioned that's from another one of her series. Like in this one, it's brought up like the Kane brothers and that's one of the series that I read also. So if you've read any of her other books, like I just think it's so fun that these characters like kind of show up. But even if you haven't read any of her other books, you could still read this or read them and it would be fine. Like you wouldn't be confused. But this book, is it just came out like a week two weeks ago maybe and it follows maggie and brody this is also a brother's best friend romance i well, i have been reading so many brother's best friend romances recently interesting anyways this follows maggie and brody and maggie is an event planner wedding planner and so she decides to treat herself to a little vacation in bora bora her plan basically for her vacation is to just meet guys relax have a good time but when she gets there she runs into her brother's best friend brody who is there on a work trip. Basically, Brody is trying to climb the corporate ladder at his job and his boss's daughter is getting married in Bora Bora. He owns a bunch of hotels and buildings and whatever. And so the hotel in Bora Bora is where the daughter is getting married. So Brody goes to try and suck up to the dad and try and like get this promotion that he's competing for at the office but Brody is like super super awkward when he tries to talk to the boss like the dad and while Maggie's there she overhears a conversation about how something went wrong with the bridal party and she's like oh my god this is my in like I could help them and then like maybe I could start working with them they're like a huge company so she decides to pretend to be Brody's girlfriend to worm her way into this wedding and kind of help Brody out because he's like really fumbling like 
he's not doing well with trying to talk to the family. Maggie ends up being a bridesmaid in the wedding, and so now her and Brody are like forced to hang out with the family for the 10 days that they're there, and there's just so many things that happen. Like, I just, I can't even describe because I don't want to give anything away, but it's so funny, like the stuff that happens. Maggie and Brody, I love their banter. Like, I love, I just like love how they interact with each other and they're like, oh, like, I hate the other person, but, like, obviously they don't. It's just so good. If you're looking for just, like, a light, easy read, the weather's getting warmer. Like, it's, like, the perfect beach read, honestly. It's so good. Okay, the next book I got is One Day by David Nichols. If you haven't heard of One Day, it was originally, obviously, the book, but then it was a movie with Anne Hathaway, and then it got made into a TV show. I watched the show. I never watched the movie, but I watched the show a few weeks ago by myself and I was obsessed with it. And then I watched it again with my roommate and we were like, oh my God, we have to get the book. The show was so good. It kind of reminded me of normal people in a sense because it's like they meet and then it, it's kind of like just showing like years of their lives that go by and like they're not together than they are. And like, it was kind of giving normal people, but honest, as much as I love, love, love normal people, I really liked that one day was like over 20 years. And so you see so much of their lives. And so I'm excited to read the book and see like more, even more details of like maybe what the show missed out on. But this follows Dexter and Emma. They meet at the very end of college and kind of have like a one night romance and then don't really talk. This is also in the 80s. Like it starts in the 80s. So there's also kind of that like, like, it's not like they're, like, having cell phones and, like, texting each other. Like, they met for the night, and then, like, they went for a while without seeing each other. They meet back up, and they become, like, really good friends, like, best friends. But there's always kind of, like, something there, like, romantically. It's just, like, how they weave in and out of each other's lives and, like, through family problems and through, like, all the things that happen in life and, like, how they just are always there for each other. And there is romance. It's so heartbreaking and so good. I'm so excited to to read the book again to like feel all of those emotions again but like see it on paper and I just I really really loved it so I cannot wait to read the book. Also though I will say I kind of don't like that it's written by a man. I don't really read um romances written by a man but I do have good hopes for this book. Okay the last book I got is super super exciting. It's called Rabbit Heart, and it's by Christine Irvin, who was actually, or was, my professor in college. I knew that this book was coming out um, because I was one of the first people she told, but no, it's so exciting. This is a memoir. I'm just so happy and proud of her and, like, excited that she gets to share her writing with the world, and also this book, like, it's been kind of crazy. Like, the New York Times wrote about it. Um, Oprah like included it with her favorite book picks. Like it's getting a lot of traction as it should, like rightfully so. This is a memoir about Christine's mother who was murdered and kind of like the grief of processing this. This book is just so much wrapped up into one a child reckoning with grief and what it means to lose their mom but also what it means to be a woman and what it means to be an adult still grappling with this a daughter who wants to write and not stay silent about the violence that happened and i just am so like happy that she's chosen to share her work with us i got to hear the end of this two years ago before obviously before it was published because this just came out and it was just so like beautiful to be able to hear her words before other people got to hear them and i'm just so proud and it's just so cool that i can be like i know her like she did that and i think everyone should read this it's truly such a beautiful piece of work and i'm so proud of her Okay, now on to the book that I'm currently reading, or actually I just finished it last night, so that's kind of a lie, 
but I did just get Wild Love by Elsie Silver on my Kindle. Like I said, I love a cowboy romance. I love a small town. The first book I read from Elsie Silver was the Chestnut Spring series, so like the cowboy romance. I absolutely love them. That is what got me into the cowboy romance, and so she just came out with a new book, Wild Love, and I got it on my Kindle, and I was obsessed with it. I read it so quickly, like literally two days I read it. The book was, can you guess it, Brother's Best Friend. I'm telling you, like, what is it with me reading all these Brother's Best Friend books? I don't know, but it was so, so, so good. I loved it so much. This book follows Ford and Rosalie, or Rosie. Rosie lived in the city, and she decides to move back home after she gets fired from her job and she's kind of like on the outs with her boyfriend. She moves back home and lives with her brother, gets a job working with his best friend Ford, who is like a very well-known, like famous music producer, son of like a very famous musician. And he hires her to be like a business manager for his new music like producing studio that he's opening. But Ford also just finds out that he has a daughter. And so the daughter comes to live with him and it's just like the small town, the angst between them. They're like, of course, like, I feel like with Brother's Best Friend, it's always like, oh, we hate each other. Like they really don't, but that's how this one is too. Like they're like, oh, like, yeah, we just like act like we hate each other. Like they joke around all the time. They like throw digs at each other, but then like they really love each other. I can't wait for the second book. Also, Elsie Silver does the thing where she includes like characters that you've read in other books. So like Ford's sister, Willa, she had a whole book about her. And so again, like you don't need to read the other books to understand, like you're not missing out on anything. But if you did read the books and you're like, oh my God, it's so-and-so, like that's so cool. And so I think that's so fun that it's like this whole universe wrapped together. Like I said, the second book comes out, I think this summer, September maybe. And so I'll be patiently waiting for that. I guess that wraps up my book haul and my current read. So thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of them. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.